I'll be very brief. I want to talk very briefly about the auto strike. I'd like to say a few words about the contract negotiations between the United Auto Workers and the big three auto companies. You know, I've been in touch with both parties over since this began over the last few weeks and over the last the past decade. Auto companies have uh, seen record profits, including the last few years, because of the extraordinary skill and sacrifices of the UAW workers. But those record profits have not been shared fairly, in my view, with those workers just as the Treasury Department has released a report pointing out that the most comprehensive report ever dealing with how unions are good for both union workers and non-union workers to, and the overall economy. Unions raise workers' wages, they said, incomes, increase home ownership, increase retirement savings, increase access to critical benefits like sick leave and child care, and reduce inequality, all of which strengthen our economy for all workers. That's because unions, unions raise standards across the workplaces and entire industries, pushing up wages and strengthening benefits for everyone. That's why strong unions are critical to a growing economy and growing from the middle out, the bottom up, not the top down. That's especially true as we transition to a clean energy future, which we're in the process of doing. I believe that transition should be fair and a win-win, excuse me, for auto workers and auto companies. But I also believe the contract agreement must lead to a vibrant, made-in-America future that promotes good, strong, middle-class jobs that workers can raise a family on. Where the UAW remains at the heart of our economy and where the big three companies continue to lead in innovation, excellence, quality, and leadership. Last night, after negotiations broke down, the UAW announced a targeted strike at a few big three auto plants. L let's be clear. No one wants a strike. Say it again. No one wants a strike. But I respect workers' right to use their options under the collective bargaining system. And I understand the workers' frustration. Over generations, auto workers sacrificed so much to keep the industry alive and strong, especially through the economic crisis and the pandemic. Workers deserve a fair share of the benefits they help create for an enterprise. I do appreciate that the parties have been working around the clock. I, and when I first called them at the very first day of the negotiations, I said, please, stay at the table as long as you can to try to work this out. And the, they've been around the clock, and the companies have made some significant offers. But I believe they should go further to ensure record corporate profits mean record contracts for the UAW. Let me say that again. Record corporate profits, which they have, should be shared by record contracts for the UAW. And just as we're building an economy of the future, we need labor agreements for the future. It's my hope that the parties can return to the negotiation table to forge a win-win agreement to continue our active engagement. I'm, dis I'm dispatching two members of my team to Detroit, Acting Labor Secretary Julie Hsu and White House Senior Advisor Gene Sperling, both of them been involved up to now, to offer their full support for the parties in reaching a contract. The bottom line is, that auto workers help create America's middle class. They deserve a contract that sustains them in the middle class. So thank you very much. That's all I'm going to say. Thank Mr. you. President, what point would you get directly involved in the negotiations? Should Hunter get a pardon? 